world is smaller today because of improved connectivity and access to information. But also the world is getting more and more divided. People seem to be so easily opposed to each other on virtually every issue that matters, from climate to immigration, from refugees to racism. According to the UN, the majority of the world's major conflicts have a cultural component. UNESCO was founded on the belief that protecting and promoting culture is essential to achieving global peace and mutual understanding. What's the role of culture in today's world? What has UNESCO done to help promote dialogue between different civilizations? And what are the challenges it is facing in a time of rising tensions? To discuss these issues and more, I'm happy to talk with Ernesto Otane, Assistant Director General for Culture of UNESCO. Welcome to Dialogue, Mr. Otane. Uh, we know UNESCO is the only UAN JC with a mandate for culture. I would like to have you talk a little bit about you know, what is the role of culture in today's world? Well, it's the, I was, as I come from the sector, I would say it's the most important, but uh, we have a, a very large mandate at UNESCO that encompass culture, education, science, and communication information. What we see today in this changing world with uh, so many conflicts around the world, that culture plays uh, a role not only as an enabler, but also as a, as a driver of sustainable development. And today, when we see um, that there is um, many countries that try to live together, to exchange experience, knowledge, um, culture plays the role of a glue between communities, countries and cultures, different cultures. That's why we have instruments, legal instruments that are the convention, that plays a pivotal role in, uh, in the, um, the multi-dimensions of the development of societies. And that's why we believe that today, more than ever, it plays a crucial role uh, during crisis, after crisis, and also to tackle some of the biggest issues that today we are embracing, that are climate crisis, climate change, the educational systems, and how we transfer to new generation, a more sustainable world. A more sustainable world. Uh, last September, UNESCO you know, held this uh, World Conference on Cultural Policies and Sustainable Development. Uh, so this is the largest global conference you know, on culture in the last 40 years. Uh, in Mexico, of course, 150 countries unanimously adopted a declaration uh, that recognized culture as a global public good. Uh, so, uh, what's the follow-up and how significant is that move? Well, as you mentioned, we waited 40 years for having all ministers of culture together in this conference, or Category 2 conference in Mexico, in the Mondia Cult. And uh, the idea was to have a discussion around um, what are the gaps that we are confronted today and what are the opportunities and what are the priorities fixed by member states uh, around culture that today includes heritage, diversity, creativity, creative economy. And uh, the, the most important of this uh, meeting was the declaration that put forward like a roadmap on public policies in the culture field. And what was, uh, after two years of consultation, interregional consultation, is that today we have to focus on priorities. Three of the, f we, we defined five big uh, avenues to work. One was on digital means, the economic of culture and the importance of the economy uh, in culture, the climate crisis and how it's tackling heritage, but also uh, indigenous knowledge or, um, or uh, building uh, cohesive societies. And, uh, and what came out is this global public good as a need to be recognized in whatever new agenda will be built after the 2030 agenda. And today we have been able, uh, with the help of our member states, to include these items not only at the UN level, but also at the G20, at the G77 
plus China at the BRICS. And we see uh, very soon uh, in Abu Dhabi there will be this uh, COP. And for the first time, informally, we're going to have a uh, Minister of Culture that will discuss how um, environment can be um, tackled with a very specific knowledge from the culture and heritage sectors and also in the G7. So we see that today when you are talking about culture, it's not only recognized for the first time as a common public good, but there is also the possibility to work, to have a standalone goal for whatever will be the next agenda uh, between member states. And that's the first time. And that's what we feel was a missing link between the agenda that we have until now and, uh, and uh, the, the, the culture that is somehow present everywhere but not recognized as, a, as an enabler for sustainable development. Again, for sustainable development. Uh, you know, specifically for China, China joined the UNESCO in 1947. Uh, so China has been active in participating in UNESCO programs, you know, uh, educational and other you know, restoration of uh, the uh, cultural sites. Uh, so I wonder how do you see this um, you know, cooperation between China as a member of UNESCO, of course, and also you know, what, what, is, um, what can we do more to enhance the relationship, enhance China's participation? Well, you mentioned it. Uh, China has been uh, a very good partner not only for, for, for the cultural sector, but uh, in UNESCO. Today, for, for example, the, 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 the role that uh, China can play on ed educational matters or in, in, uh, in communication information or new technology or the ethics of artificial intelligence that was adopted two years ago in the last general conference. Um, for, for, for us, what we see is that China has been on, on the verge of uh, constructing also uh, new knowledge on preservation and safeguarding. China with some other countries are the, the one who has the largest number inscribed uh, sites and elements in the in tangible and intangible uh, conventions and somehow what is challenging today for, for countries like China, with the dimension of China and with the population of China, is how all these inscriptions are not the final point, but the, f the beginning point of the conservation issues. It means how we ensure that we tackle issues on sustainable development, not in contradiction with conservation preservation, but enhance possibilities to, to build ways of conserving that doesn't affect or, or stop some type of developments, but at the same time respecting the environment, for once, uh, building so, uh, cities that introduce technologies and new developments in a sustainable way, how they control and manage those sites for not producing over tourism, that today is one of the biggest challenge of big cities, so that uh, local communities can benefit of those inscriptions. And I believe that today the reflection that we are uh, putting together with China is also in the two major priorities that has UNESCO defined. That it's priority Africa, and in this sense we are developing many projects in Africa with China on uh, preservation, on uh, safeguarding, or uh, also fighting uh, illicit trafficking of cultural goods. And also the other uh, big challenge is uh, gender equality. And in this sense, you have your first lady who is a champion on education for girls and women. And, uh, and that's a, a crucial issue uh, overall today in many countries, girls don't have access to education. So to continue to, to be um, inspired by this work that we do together with China, can help. And at the same time, you know that we have 194 member states at UNESCO, and we truly believe that all countries should be part of this of um, um, great organization, because the, all countries have a role to play, independently of how big they are or how 
strong they have a, a G, uh, GDP, they should have representation, their voice heard. Today, for example, China plays a, a very important role in the Pacific. There are many seats, uh, small island developing countries, that it's counting on how China can help to solve or, or tackle some of the biggest issues that they are confronted, for example, on, uh, on prevention, on climate crisis that are coming each year more and more. And uh, we believe that there is expertise. We have category two centers. We have many UNESCO chairs that are uh, with uh, huge, big uh, public universities in China. So yes, we, we truly believe that China plays uh, a very strong and important role for the development of the future of our programs at UNESCO. Mm -hmm. Uh, we earlier you also talked about uh, you know today's world is not only about um, you know when we look at the issues you know the conflicts uh, sometimes it's politics sometimes it's economic issues, but also you know the importance again here is uh, you know dialogue understanding culture issues. Uh, then people would say, you know, what is the role of UNESCO? Um, there is a concern whether the role of UNESCO uh, somehow is being undermined because of those political competition among its members. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, you know, all UN organizations, uh, you will say that they were built on, on, on political consensus. When we're talking about putting together 194 countries, it means that you have to find some common ground to build consensus around the big topics. Uh, what, what we have seen in the last year is, is that sometimes some cultural issue became, become in political discussions. What we have tried to do since the DG, uh, Madame Azoulay, has taken uh, UNESCO, has, be, has been to try to put everybody together to find those consensus. And until now we have been able to do it. I hope that it will continue, but when we see new crises that are popping everywhere, we see that it's more difficult and that it's not enough only to have these uh, programs that allow us to build together. Um, we see that dialogue is, and as I mentioned before, dialogue is the best way to solve problems that normally goes very far away in the history. What we have seen, and that's only to, to showcase how we were able uh, to, to give a new opportunity to this discussion, has been, for example, what we have been able to do with intangible cultural heritage around um, countries that historically have been divided and they are coming together to present files uh, the same year together. We had the, the case of the serum uh, between North Korea and South Korea. We had the case two years ago with the, what is this, uh, the Rumba Congolese between the two Congo, uh, RDC and uh, uh, Congo Brazzaville. We have uh, around uh, Arab region countries that have together putting the, some culinary uh, elements like the couscous between countries that normally have many discussion on territories issue. And we believe that it has shown that culture allows to come together countries that have divided history. And at the end, the, 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 they are prevailing this, this, this opportunity sh to show the world that on cultural um, uh, elements, they are capable to come together. Because, and that's the most important, those conventions are based about how communities safeguard this heritage. So it's not anymore only about political decision. It's a country, who is in this case two countries, who are presenting together. But at the end, those who have to preserve it are communities that continue with tradition, that uh, transfer, transfer those knowledge to new generation. And we have been seeing um, our major success story uh, around those, um, uh, those sharing humanity values together. Like? 
like the, the one that I described, or when we have uh, transborder inscriptions. Uh, during the committee in Riyadh in September of this year, uh, for example, for the first time we have two, three memory sites that were inscribed. It's a, a new category that exists. Uh, one in Rwanda, from the genocide uh, site, uh, in Argentina, during the, 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 the military power that was in the 70s and 80s, and uh, the, the buried um, during the, after the First World War from Belgium and France. And that shows that today, after some time that is passing, allow countries to come together to share a part of their history that was divisive, that today they can bring together new generation, especially for having this strong of uh, um, text uh, that says uh, never again. Never again. And that's the most important. How we learn from our, our faults or how we learn from bad experience that the world has embraced. Mm -hmm. We hope that at the end new generation will be more clever than us to ensure that uh, that this was uh, the mandate of our organization mm -hmm. served for. Thank you, Mr. Tanes. Thank you for accepting our interview. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. With that, we come to the end of our discussion. Many thanks to our guests. You can also find us on the CGTN app on YouTube. I'm Xu Qindo. Thanks for being with us. See you next time.